Welcome to part two of my automatic transmission service video for a 2011 Mazda 3 sedan sport. In part one, we drained the transmission fluid and changed the filter, then replaced the 3.5 quarts that drained out during the pan drop filter change process. Since draining the transmission fluid removes less than half of the fluid in the transmission, in part two, I'll show you how to do a complete fluid flush using the car's own transmission pump. I'm David, and this is Fixity Fix. Fixity Fix! Transmission fluid should, if uh, <laughs> my research is correct, flow out of this metal cooler into this hose. We're going to tap into this cooler to do a transmission flush using the force of the transmission's own pump. to the outlet, 3 8 internal diameter hose, and after heating the hose, fit on just fine, I don't think there should be enough force in it to have to use a hose clamp. I put a hose barb into the intake hose for the transmission because I don't completely trust that I'm connected to the right hose. I'm going to see which one it really comes out of when I start the car. And now for the transmission flush. You can see I have both hoses running into the uh, waste receptacle here. I marked it for quart levels. I don't want to go above three quarts. I'll probably start with two for the first time of the pump pushing fluid out. Um, first off, we're just going to test and see which, uh, verify which hose the um, transmission fluid comes out of. We're going to do that by starting the ignition. The car is up on jacks. It's in park. It's chocked. We're going to leave it in park because it's up on jacks. Sure, there aren't any leaks. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, we're going to pump out a couple of quarts. stopped it right at two quarts and we're going to add two quarts to the funnel up top and then repeat the procedure at least a couple of times. Okay, so two quarts came out last time. I added two quarts to the transmission funnel at the dipstick tube up top. Now I'm going to start the car again and drain two more quarts. We're looking for the transmission fluid in the uh, clear tube to start looking like new transmission fluid, which is red.
going to let it go to three. Alright, we'll stop since it's getting bubbly. We don't want to run the pump dry, so we need to load back in two and a half quarts. This is a half quart. Oh, it's looking nice and pink now. That's good. All right, two more quarts came out. I did try to go for three quarts, but I started to see bubbles and air in the line. So I won't go that much again. We'll just do two quarts at a time. This final pass, we're just going to put one quart out and one quart in and call it done because... I only ordered uh, 10 quarts of the transmission fluid. I could stop here because um, the fluid looks nice and new that's coming out, but let's go ahead and give it a full flush. One more quart, here we go. And now let's put one more quart back in the transmission dipstick filler tube. All right, so I've taken the tubes out of the circuit and replaced the tube back on the transmission cooler. Now we're going to reclamp it. Oh, this time I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna put the clamps facing down, <laughs> make it easier to get off in the future. So you won't have to use the fancy clamp tool. All right, so that is back on and tight. I see no evidence of leaks underneath. We're going to leave this marking here because we know it's correct. And next time we can just use one tube connected right here to flush out the transmission. Skid plate reinstallation is the reverse of removal. The last part is to check the transmission fluid level after the car is fully warmed up. And you do this with the car parked on a level surface, idling in park. Pull the dipstick. And we take a look and make sure it's right there in the middle of those two notches. So we are all good.